Hey, and welcome back. My name is Linda, and this is Netwood at Home. If this is your first time being here, welcome, welcome. So, today I am actually going to be discussing milk glass. If you've been here before, or you've found my channel because of my other milk glass videos, you know I like milk glass. I love this stuff, and I have been collecting milk glass since I was 12. So, I don't know, I'm 47 now, so whatever that comes out to in math for you. Um, I'm horrible at math because I'm not that Asian. So, um, this is going to be kind of my intro to the series that I want to do on milk glass because I want to do like individual like um, manufacturers is what I'm going at. But I lost my train of thought because that's what I do. I'm a squirrel. In the world of milk glass, there is a huge difference in quality, um, the opaqueness of the glass and just um, different patterns and stuff. Now there are some patterns that are kind of similar and then there's some that are just obviously very different. So I kind of wanted to um, go over that kind of quickly. Um, I'm probably gonna say um a lot because I'm just getting over a cold and I know in post COVID life, it's kind of a scary thing, but colds still happen and have nothing to do with the other. Uh, in fact, I think the only reason why I got sick is one, I'm already kind of like always on that level anyway because I'm allergic to cats and I have four, so if that makes sense. And secondly, um, in Oklahoma, just like the rest of the country on, you know, from like the Midwest and then eastward, we got hit with like a lot of really crappy cold days after I had been like 60 something and like the low 70s. And then all of a sudden, bam, it was like negative temperatures, which was not fun. So anyhow, so I'm kind of like on that, Ugh. but to get back to my class. Um, so today I'm just gonna do a brief, kind of a quick overview of some of the companies that I have. Um, I'm sure I'm missing a couple. I kind of went through my cabinets and ran around my house looking for pieces because I have, I have stuff everywhere, as you know. So um, the first one we're gonna start with is kind of how my collection started and that is with Anchor Hawking. So Anchor Hawking, um, as you know, is one of the main um, companies. They make a lot of everyday use glass and they actually started off making a lot of everyday use glass. So it was the gold rim pieces that actually began my collection. Now, um, I didn't dig them out, but they were actually the sandwich or the luncheon tray pieces. Or they call them like a snack sets. And it had like the little rectangular um, snack tray plate thing that had like a little spot for your cup. And that's what began my collection. Um, my grandfather found them at a yard sale. We were visiting Illinois at the time. Um, at that point in time, we lived in upstate New York. And we were visiting and he found them at a yard sale and picked them up and it was four of the snack sets and then four of the cups. And they have, they were the white milk glass with the um, shell swirl pattern and then it had the um, gold rim. No, uh, actually, did it have the shell pattern? I'll have to dig them out when I go to actually do my anchor hawking video and I'll explain more about it. My brain's kind of fuzzy at this point, but anyhow. White milk glass, and it's kind of almost, um, it's not like as white a milk glass as some of the other companies, but I absolutely love them. And so most people are pretty familiar with um, the Anchor Hawking slash Fire King, because Fire King is actually owned by Anchor Hawking, or was. Um, and so this is just a quick example for you. And um, this one is actually labeled Fire King, my actual set is actually labeled Anchor Hawking, but they are literally the same company. Um, it's like Sam's Club and Walmart, okay? Um, but regardless, when you see the milk glass and it has like the gold edge to it, it's probably 
most likely going to be anchor hawking slash fire king. Um, I see them priced kind of all over the place and I kind of wonder why because when it comes to milk glass, anchor hawking like literally pop these suckers out like pez, you know, or like tissue, just pew, pew, pew. They just kind of came out. So um, I love them. And for years and years and years, all I collected was white milk glass with a gold edge to it. And then um, my husband was like, why? And I was like, I don't know, just kind of what I did. And then he was like, but there's milk glass everywhere. And the next thing you know, I went from having a very small collection of milk glass to a huge collection of milk glass. And I love every freaking piece. So that was Anchor Hawking. The next would be, um, let's do Avon because everybody's familiar with Avon, right? So Avon also came out with milk glass and of course sold it as they did everything back in the day. Um, you had your Avon lady and she'd come to your house and she'd chill with you and she would show you what she had. Now I highly doubt they wandered around with these because some of these are pretty heavy pieces. So mostly it was just kind of a catalog order thing and then it got shipped to you like anything else. So this one is, I think it's a dove, could be a pigeon. I don't know my birds, I'm not that person. But tis a bird on a nest. And like honestly, I think it's a dove, could be a pigeon, what do I know? It's a bird and it's on a nest. Ta -da. I think it's clear design, I don't know. Um, but a very wonderful friend of mine gifted this to me. And I think it's adorable. And she's heavy. And she's actually a really good color. Like, she's pretty nice. Um, and she is marked on the bottom. If you can see it. Avon. Wall. I don't know if it'll focus. But regardless, trust me, it says Avon. Um... This is another piece that Avon did. And this one's a little bit more translucent. Now, there were other companies that did the hand, you know, the little, like, you can see, like, usually I think the ones I typically see are kind of like this or like this or whatever. Um, and I think those, I can't remember what company it was. But regardless, there's also other companies that do it. Might have been Westmoreland. Um, but I have this one, and I think she's adorable. And it's one of those things that you like, you know, you should ring on my fat finger. Um, and you're going to use it to put like some rings in. Um, I'm thinking about putting this next to my sink so that when I wash my hands, I have a little spot to put my rings. But I think it's adorable. And also from that same wonderful friend. And I love the fact that it has kind of what reminds me of like a, um, like a blossom off a tree or like a, one of those like antique roses. It's very sweet. Okay, so that is Avon. Um, let's see. Another company that made a lot of milk glass. They actually did a lot of planters though. And I actually have quite a few of their planters. Um, and that's EO Brody. This one, I don't know what this texture is called. It actually kind of disturbs me because it reminds me of a brain and I don't know why. I think it's supposed to be kind of like coral or something. Mm, but I do find it kind of uncomfortable, I'm not gonna lie. And again, it's kind of a more translucent white. I mean, you can see my fingers through there. Um, more of a translucent white than say like your Westmoreland or your, um, your Fenton. Um, and EO Brody tended to mark all of his pieces. So you just kind of have to flip them over and they're usually marked. Um, now this piece would have been made in a mold and you can see the seam is actually right here. And it's on both sides. So I'm going to put into a mold. Okay. You kind of press down and then this part stamped. I I love them. 
I don't really do a lot of indoor plants because I tend to kill all indoor plants, but I like them. And I find them wicked useful for all kinds of stuff, like putting brushes, pens, whatever. Um, and so a lot of my planters like this actually get used around my house to hold other stuff. So I definitely love them. Um, okay. So, oh, I'm going to go back real quick because I want to show you guys the milk glass that came in different colors. So this is the first time I am, and like I said, I've been collecting for like a billion years and I have never seen a gray milk glass. But the same wonderful friend who gifted me the Avon pieces also gifted me these. And these ones are also Fire King. So there's the creamer and there's the sugar. Now these may look familiar because um, they also use the same pattern with the laurel leaf in luster in their peach luster wear. And peach luster, and I think they also did a milk glass, like a plain milk glass, in this same little pattern with the uh, laurel leaf. But in, I used to have this set in peach luster, but then I was like, I really wasn't gonna collect all the different colors of milk glass, but then, I don't know. I just have these two pieces. But again, like I said, I've never seen gray um, milk glass before. And it is just a coating. It's a glass coating, like a finish, um, like they would have done with like the peach luster. Meaning that it's not, ooh, that was a terrible sound. Meaning that it's not gray all the way through like with normal milk glass. It's a white milk glass and then they have like a gray glass glaze, kind of like, whew, and that's how you get it. But I think it's the coolest thing ever. Like I said, I've never seen gray before. And now I'm gonna start looking for gray because I think this paired with like the Indiana glass, like tiara black milk glass would be amazing, especially like Halloween and stuff. Like how cool would that be? Um, but I don't think I'll get like tons and tons of it just because I mean, I just, I like my white milk glass. I think it goes with everything, but very cool. Okay, next piece. And I believe this was from the same friend, Terry, um, who gave me the other pieces. And this one's kind of a, a mint blue color. And it's got like, I think they're raspberries or blackberries. I don't think they're grapes. They don't look like grapes, they look like little berries. But, um, how cute is that? And this, because my bathroom is like, so if you're new here, you probably don't know, I'm an absolute freak about Harry Potter. And so my bathroom is actually Shell Cottage. And if you've ever read the books, you'll get the reference. If you haven't, read the books, people, they're great. So my bathroom is kind of Shell Cottage. And so I have like mermaids and fish and that sort of thing in there. And um, not that mermaids had anything to do with Shell Cottage, but you get it, it's like kind of a beachy thing. Um, Anyway, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, so I like the color because it goes with the blues and that kind of a thing. Um, and I think this is the only piece I have in this color that I just kind of keep for that sort of thing. But I keep like hair clips and bobby pins and stuff in it. Very cute, love it. And I can't remember from I wanna say Jeanette glass. I think it's Jeanette glass. If not, I'll correct it somewhere on the screen. Um, and then there's this one, which I also believe is a Jeanette glass piece. And you can see like little acorns on there. And I guess those are oak leaves because it's acorns, right? But this is the pink milk glass. Very, very pretty. And so those are just a couple of the colors that you would get a milk glass in. They also have, um, I guess jadeite would probably be the closest. That would be like the kind of a green milk glass kind of a deal. I don't have any jadeite. Um, the jadeite that I had, I gave to my best friend because she wanted to collect jadeite. Okay, so those are the colors. Um, 
FTD, like the floors company. I'm pretty sure this is FTD. Um, and they did planters as well, as well as vases. So you'll see like a lot of bud vases and I have a ton of them um, from FTD. And I think these are really cool. They don't mark them though on the bottom. It just has a number from the mold, but um, also molded glass. There's a seam right there. And then another one on the other side. Um, but I think it's really cute. And this one's actually on my desk. It was holding just random crap in it. But um, I love that. I love that pattern with like the rose or like the tulip or whatever, like the leaves. I think it's really pretty. I think they're supposed to be roses. I don't know. They kind of look like tulips to me. So FTD is another manufacturer that did make a lot of milk glass. Um, <clears throat> I have some Dithridge and Company pieces, but I couldn't get to them because they're in a cabinet and it's kind of like, <sighs> I need to rearrange it again behind my, where my desk is and stuff or where I pack um, orders because I put a table there because I need to move some stuff out and rearrange things and the table's just sitting there. But um, anyway, I digress. So I'll show you, I'll actually do a Dithridge and Company because I have a few of their pieces and I love them. And so like the more obscure pieces I'll do like in one video. But this is Macbeth Evans. And this is, um, it's considered like more of a, an opal glass. I don't know if you can kind of tell, but see how like translucent it is? And it has kind of that opalescent quality to it. Yeah. I love this piece and I have four of them. I got them for like a really good deal at one of our local antique malls and ah, I love them. And it has like, I think they call this a sandwich pattern. Like, I don't know, I'm like not doing it any justice am I? Ah. I'll just need to take some like pictures I guess and insert pictures but you can kind of see there. It's beautiful. I love this. Um, okay, we'll do Fenton next, I think, because everybody's pretty familiar with Fenton. Um, and of course Fenton, their main claim to fame was their hobnail. And then of course you have like the ruffled edge, the hobnail. Um, all their pieces tend to be pretty weighty for what they are. And... They're a really good white color, like, you know, I mean, you can definitely say it's a gray now, but like up against something else, they're very, very white, very, very pure white. Like, so this is the, the Fire King Anchor Hawking piece, and you, I mean, you can kind of see how much whiter this piece is. Um, I actually have quite a bit of Fenton, and, um, when I go to do like the individual companies and stuff like that, I'll show you like how I have them in my cabinet and then we'll take them out and we'll look at them and stuff. And then I'll give you more of a history on that company. But this is Fenton um, and I love this piece. It's one of my favorites. Um, this is also a Fenton piece and I love these. I actually got four pieces, I think. I think I have four. And um, three of the pieces I actually got as a set up. Found someone on like Marketplace that was selling them and I got them super cheap. It was a bit of a drive, but it was totally worth it. But this is their Violets on Snow with the Silver Crest top. And most of their pieces, once they're painted, will be like, you know, like signed on the bottom. I don't know if this one had just the sticker, um, because a lot of their pieces, that's all they did was they put a sticker on them. Some of them are signed by the artist that painted them. This one is not, but it is a Fenton piece and it's their Violets on Snow, like I said, and then it has like the Silver Crest here. Silver Crest. I love these pieces. I have a Bon Bon dish and a couple of like smaller like little dishes that have this also. And my husband got me this one separately. Look how pretty that is. Oh, I just love these so much. I love purple, it's my favorite color. And um, just, oh, just does it for me. 
Okay, and then we have Imperial Glass. So Imperial Glass also made Milk Glass, and they also did a great pattern. And they actually have several pieces um, from this collection that I love. It's a beautiful little vase. Love it, love it. And the Imperial Glass pieces are typically marked. This one's not, but it'll have like the IG, um, their logo on the bottom. But love that. Um, let's see who else. Oh, can't forget Indiana Glass. Now can we? Um, where did I put the Indiana Glass? Did I not bring the Indiana Glass piece here? Because that would have been weird. Oh, no, I did. Here it is. Duh. Okay, so Indiana Glass has a grape pattern. It's her Harvest Grape. And I have quite a bit of Indiana Glass. Um, I know a lot of people collect milk glass. And I watch their videos on YouTube. And they're like, I don't really like the grape. Why do you buy it then? Because <laughs> there's so many other options. I mean, I've already shown you like so many pieces and none of them have like, you know, they have nothing to do with grape. But um, I think it's because once you start buying milk glass, you just buy milk glass. But I do love the grape pattern. Um, and I just, to me, it's very like, um, kind of nostalgic. It's just kind of like the thing. But yeah, so this one has the grape pattern and you can see the difference though, like between the Imperial glass grape the Indiana glass grape. They're just very different. Now, as I mentioned before in my first video, you know, when milk glass was first being made in like Venice, they were doing it um, as the poor man's porcelain, right? Because porcelain's very, very expensive. And then having it imported, because a lot of the poor, like the really amazing porcelain was being made like in places like China, and then of course, then it got moved over and it was being made in Western Europe, but it was very, very expensive. And um, anyway, so it was kind of like their answer to, oh look, it looks like porcelain and it really does. And so you'll find that there's a lot of pieces that are painted. Um, I have a Westmoreland box that I'll show you when I do Westmoreland and it has like some gilding on it and stuff. And Dithridge and Company did some painting on theirs and the the couple of pieces I have from Dithridge and Company are from like the late 1800s. And you can tell where they were really trying to mimic the, the beautiful porcelain pieces of the day. Um, but anyway, I kind of feel like Indiana Glass did their grape pattern um, in answer to Westmoreland's panel grape. And I'll have to check that, but I think that's how it went. Was that Westmoreland did their panel grape? Oh. I have a dead spider in my face. It's always so sad. They get in there and they're like, what do they think they're going to eat? It's it's a vase, people. Nobody comes in here. I'm so sorry. Um, but anyhow, so <clears throat> Westmoreland had their panel grape. And you can see how beautiful it is. And then, of course, it has like the traditional. And then this one is actually stamped. Let's see if I can find it. Not more right there. And so, and it actually does have the label. Now, this also has the label for the person who originally owned this piece. Um, and I just haven't bothered to take it off because they use like medical tape, which I thought was kind of interesting. But, um, yeah, so it does have like the actual like marking right there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it says, it's the WG for Westmoreland glass. I don't want to tip it because I don't really want the little carcass to fall out. But anyhow, so this is the panel grape. And then you have... The Indiana glass harvest grape and you can see that they are kind of similar but they're obviously very very different I mean the the detail in this piece is tremendous and this one's still pretty good and then I don't have enough hands but anyway and then you toss that in with like the imperial, ooh, the imperial glass uh, uh, uh. and you can see there's a lot of grapes going on and that's one of the things that I love so much too, though, is that I can mix them and I don't mind mixing them. Um, but yeah, I love my pieces. Okay, so that's Westmoreland. Also, Westmoreland is heavy as sin. Just telling you. 
like like bad secrets you know what I mean it's, it's heavy 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 as a conscience should be but yeah very heavy so I could imagine like um because I also have like the pitcher and the pitcher is also ridiculously heavy like trying to like pour that like Ugh. um but gorgeous love them and I have some other patterns that Westmoreland did that have nothing to do with grapes that I'll show you as well when we do Westmoreland Day. Sorry. I'm gonna move stuff around. Okay. So Indiana glass. Um, and I almost totally forgot to mention when we were talking about grapes and stuff. It's me, and we know I'm scatterbrained. Um, Anchor Hawking, of course, also did melt glass grape powder. And this one's actually full of stuff because it's been sitting on my nightstand. But I'll show you the lid. Do, do, do. I don't know if come on. I don't know if I'll come in very clearly, but there you go. So, like I said, Anchor Hawking also made. Is this a Mark Hawking? No. But you can kind of tell like the translucent quality of this, like even compared to like the Imperial glass. I mean, look at how like kind of a creamy. Um, I don't know, like, skim milk quality this one has compared to, like, you know, Westmoreland. Or even if you were to compare this grape to Indiana glass. I mean, you can, you can see, like, this is definitely skim milk. Um, but I still love it, and I actually like, it's actually very, very soft. It's a very soft glass. Like, very smooth feeling. Um... But anyway, I didn't want to forget to mention that because, hello, we're talking about grapes and there's grapes on everything. So, okay. So I actually have a couple of examples of this one. So Fostoria also made milk glass and this is their Windborn pattern, um, which actually looks very, very sim similar to like the Kemble Toltec, um, which and these also look very similar to the Westmoreland Old Quilt. So, these are kind of fun. And this is called a nappy dish. I don't even know what that means. Like, what do you do with it? Like, gravy or something? I don't know. I think it's cool. This is... I can't imagine being able to put bananas in this. It's, like, really, really small. Um... I loving them, lovingly call them taco holders because I feel like that you'd fit like a really nice taco in there. Just saying. But um, yeah, I think it's a bonbon dish. But then I don't know how that would work either. Maybe those little like, uh, what are they called? They're like kind of like a wafer thing, and they're kind of like rolled, and you can like dip your dip them into your coffee and stuff. Anyway, maybe you can put a bunch of them in there. That's really cool. You know, like pens and stuff. So there's that. And this pattern, I love this pattern though. I mean, I think it's so pretty. These are also pretty good um, weighted pieces as well. Let's see. Do I have anything else? Mm -mm -mm. I think that's it. Um, I do have Ellie Smith. Couldn't get to it. So I will do an Ellie Smith day. I may have to combine it because I don't think I have a lot of Ellie Smith. So, um, what my hopes are is that I'll do like Fostoria, uh, Westmoreland, I'll do Imperial, and then um, of course I'll do Anchor Hawking and Indiana Glass. So, you guys can see all those. Um, I have quite a few pieces of the Fostoria Windburn, so I'll show you those too. Um, and then I'll just do kind of like an abstract day um, where I show you just kind of like the, the few that are like the more rare ones, like Dithridge. Um, uh, Macbeth Evans, and I'll probably put Ellie Smith into that one because, like I said, I don't have a whole lot of those. Um, and I think that's it. But if you have any suggestions or you have any questions, um, let me know. Go ahead and put those down below. I'll answer questions like, do they have arsenic? Are they toxic? Can you use them? That sort of thing too, because I've had those questions before. Um, and I'll cover that in the video series, just so you know, because you know, it's good to know, right? Um, but yeah, so like if you like these kinds of videos, if you like the milk glass videos, you know, go ahead and give me a like, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Um, please remember, collect what you love, 
love what you collect and thank you so much for being here and I will see you guys soon. Thanks. Bye.